everyone and welcome to Douglas County's Black History Program. We are so glad you came to celebrate with us this evening. I hope you will find tonight's program uh, inspirational because it, cer it certainly is for me. This year's national theme is African Americans and the Arts. And I am so excited about it because in my first career, I made, a, my career was a, as an artist. So even though I don't work in that directly anymore, I still consider myself an artist. I support the arts. I love all forms of the arts. And um, so this uh, theme couldn't have been more exciting for me personally. And I hope it'll be exciting for you. So African-American African art is infused with African, Caribbean, and the black American lived experiences. In the fields of visual and performing arts, literature, fashion, folklore, language, film, music, architecture, culinary, and other forms of cultural expression, the African-American influence has been paramount. African-American artists used art to preserve history and community memory, as well as for empowerment. In 2024, we examine the varied history and life of African-American arts and artisans. For centuries, Western intellectuals denied or minimized the contributions of people of African descent to the arts as well as history, even as their artistry in many genres was mimicked or stolen. However, we can still see the unbroken chain of black art production from antiquity to the present, from Egypt across Africa, from Europe to the New World. Prior to the American Revolution, Enslaved Africans of the Low Country began their more than 300-year tradition of making sweet grass baskets, revealing their visual artistry via craft. The suffering of those in bondage gave birth to the spirituals, the nation's first contribution to music. Who knew that? Did you know that? Did you know, really, that the spiritual is a uniquely Ameri is our uniquely American first piece of music. And enslaved people created it. And our Western music, our American music has its roots from spirituals. It's the truth. I love spirituals. Do you all like them? Yes. I had a roommate in college. She was a voice major. And she hated spirituals. She said they were too depressing. But I loved them. OK. so. Blues musicians, blues musicians such as Robert Johnson, McKinley Mud Muddy Waters Morganfield, and Riley B.B. King created and nurtured a style of music that became the bedrock for gospel, soul, and other still popular and evolving forms of music. Black contributions to literature include works by poets like Phyllis Wheatley. She wrote essays, autobiographies, and novels. Uh, other writers include David Walker and Maria Stewart. Has anybody heard of these people? Have you, have you all heard of David Walker? When I, when I started doing the, working on this uh, introduction, okay, who is the same four people we see every Black History Month? Martin Luther King, Harriet Tubman, who? Frederick Douglass, Rosa Parks, right? Them, the, the, we all know them. But when I, when I started working on this, I didn't know who David Walker was. I hadn't, I'd heard of Phyllis Wheatley. I didn't know who Maria Stewart was. I thought, oh my gosh, what have I been, where have I been? And I called myself an artist. So I thought, you know, let me, let me put some slides together so people can just, you know, see who, you don't have to use your imagination. You can just see something. Okay, black aesthetics have also been manifested through sculptors like Edmonia Lewis and painters like Henry O. Tanner. Now, if this isn't breathtaking, look at this. So I was reading about her and she went to uh, Europe and she studied. 
and it was the tradition that the sculptors would start their, their sculptures and um, they would have other people do the finishing. But she always finished all her sculptures because she didn't want anybody to say her work wasn't hers. She, she did that extra thing. I think we all know, we all know, right? So I thought that was very interesting. But look at this, I mean, I, I had no idea. And this woman, look, 1868, that woman was doing that. Did y'all learn that in school? I didn't learn it. Now we know. Now we know. OK. So in the 1920s and 30s, the rise of the black renaissance and new Negro movement brought the black arts to an international stage. Members of the armed forces, such as James Reese Europe, and artists such as Langston Hughes, Josephine Baker, and Louise Lois Maylou Jones brought black culture and black American aesthetics internationally, and black culture began its ascent to becoming a dominant cultural movement to the world. In addition to the Harlem Renaissance, today we recognize that cities like Los Angeles, Chicago, and New Orleans also were homes to many black artists. The 1960s continued this thread through the cultural evolution known as the Black Arts Movement, where artists covered issues such as pride in one's heritage and established art galleries and museum exhibitions to show their own work, as well as publications such as Black Art. This period brought us such artists as Alvin Ailey and Judas Jameson. We all know them, right? Those ones, those are almost household names, right? Um, Amiri Baraka, Nikki Giovanni, and Sonia Sanchez. The movement would not have been as impactful without the influences from the broader black world, especially the, um, the Negritude movement and the writings of France Fanon. Hadn't heard of him either. Had, had, did you all know about him? Uh, I think that this is very interesting because um, there are not very many famous philosophers anyway, right? But when we get a black one, we, I mean, how, how will we find that out? And I don't think that um, his writings are taught in our philosophy programs. I might be wrong. I didn't study philosophy. I don't know. Um, but I'd never heard of him until this until this. In 1973, in the Bronx, New York black musicians DJ Cool Herc and Coke LaRock started a new genre of music called hip hop, which comprises five foundational ele elements. Here's a pop quiz. Who knows what the five are? Anybody? I wish I had a prize. <laughs> no. Nobody in this room? the answer to that? Okay, that's okay. That's why we're here. DJing, MCing, graffiti, break dancing, and beatboxing. Hip hop performers also used technological equipment such as turntables, synthesizers, drum machines, and samplers to make their songs. Since then, hip hop has continued to be a pivotal force in political, social, and cultural spaces and was a medium where issues such as racial violence in the inner city, sexism, economic disinvestment, and others took the forefront. The term Afrofuturism was used approximately 30 years ago in an effort to, de to define cultural and artistic productions in all the disciplines, music, literature, visual arts, etc., that imagine a future for black people without oppressive systems and examines how black history and knowledge intersects with technology and science. And I'm personally very interested in the Afrofuturism movement. It's, um, uh, it's fascinating to me. Um, well, let me keep going. Afrofuturist elements can be found in the music of Sun Ra, Rashawn Roland Kirk, Janelle Monet, and Jimi Hendrix. Other examples include sci-fi writer Octavia Butler, um, ma the Marvel film Black Panther, uh, and artists such as 
Lena Iris Victor and Kenyan-born sculptor Wangechi Mutu. Um, we also need to credit Ca Caribbean writers um, and artists such as Nalo Hopkins and Grace Jones. In celebrating the entire history of African Americans and the arts, um, putting a national spotlight on the richness of the past and the um, vibrancy of the present with an eye towards the future um, brings, us, brings us hope. And so tonight we celebrate the 98th annual Black History Month, the theme is African Americans and the Arts, by recognizing some very fine African American artists right here in our community. So with that, I am going to introduce you to our first artist. Woohoo! Woo That's right. So uh, we are talking about the AD West Dance Company. So let me tell you something about them. Um, the AD West Dance Company is celebrating 29 years of dance in Douglas County. All right. The AD West Dance Company is the first black-owned dance studio in Douglas County. It is owned by Angie and Gerald West, and it is the second longest-running dance studio in the county. It is also the most winning dance studio in the county with 14 national titles. multiple studio of excellence awards the best of the best awards um, entertainment and choreography awards just to name a few their dancers have been accepted into prestigious training programs such as the joffrey ballet the dance theater of Har harlem the debbie allen school and the governor's honors they offer ballet jazz tap lyrical point Rhythmonique, did I say that? Rhythmonique? Okay. And clogging. I, that made me chuckle when I read that. Okay, they, uh, they, this studio is available to girls and boys starting from age three all the way up to seniors in high school. Um, but they don't just dance, they like to give back to the community. And so last year they collected and donated over 500 stuffed animals and other items to donate to um, a, a center for children who have special needs. So tonight we are going to get to see their junior company perform a jazz dance and it's called Marina Gasolina. Marina, amfetamina, Marina, gasolina, uh -huh. Marina, caipirinha, mm. cha cha chic chic uh -huh. cha. Meet me at the school and I'll beat you like gorilla. Bite you like piranha, vem brigar com a minha aranha. Para, para, guau. 
West owners, Miss Angie West and her husband, Mr. Gerald West. Come on up. That's right. So what has been your proudest moment as a dance teacher, as a coach, as someone working with girls trying to help them develop into whole people? I think when they graduate and you see that they succeed, it doesn't matter whether they be, do something in the art of dance, but when they go out and we, we have people who have opened up their own studios, we have people that are teachers, they are pharmacists, they are, uh, uh, what do you call it when you talk to the children's feelings, psychiatrists or so, sociological people or with social, counselors. yes, counselors, that's what I'm trying to say. They're counselors. I mean, they do some of everything. And I know I'm missing some lawyers. I think we have a lawyer. Uh, we have a doctor. They do. And I think when they, and not only do they do that, they come back home and check in. So, I mean, I'm just really proud of that because we're a family oriented organization and we're not perfect. You know, you have cousins and sisters that get on your nerves, but you love them anyway. You know, so that's, and it's genuine. And I love that. I don't, you know, uh, I think that's my niche and I don't care to be like anybody else. I, I liked being a family. If I ask you how you're doing, I mean that. I can call every last one of my kids names when they walk through that door. So I just think when they come back home, it just makes me feel proud. <laughs> well, I want to make sure, I know you have some of your staff here, so we want to shout them out because I know they work very hard. Yes, so yes. You call their name and I them will. Them. Just stand up when she calls your name. I'm yes. not going to ask you to talk. Okay? So I'm going to start off by the number that you saw was choreographed by Kanan Sappho, um, Sejoy Carter, and James. Y'all, Carter, y'all come out. Yeah. Can they come up here? No, yes. come on. Yes. And then there is my competition team coordinator, Tanya McClure. Come on up. <laughs> is so I'm gonna ask, come, come on up junior dancers, come on Woo! up. You, you all stand just right here because we would like to present you with an award. So all right. Get it. And dancers, if there's dancers here, even if you didn't perform, come up here. Come on up, dancers. Everybody, all y'all, come on up. Mm -hmm. yep. And tell me when you get here, and so you can go ahead and take your picture and do, you know. Oh, look at that. It's so cute. On behalf of the Douglas County Government and the Board of Commissioners, we, pre we present you with this award for Outstanding Achievement in Dance. Thank you for your 29 years of commitment to our community. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. So next. We would like to tell you about a group called the Pyarians. The focus of the Pyarians Incorporated is to bring together persons interested in the promotion of the fine arts and other artistic endeavors to, en to enhance the enjoyment of the arts, to recognize individuals in the community for their contributions to the arts, and to encourage further study of the arts by awarding scholarships to students of music, art, theater, and dance. This organization was named the P Pierians, a name taken from the word Pieria, a region of ancient Macedonia and one of the earliest seats of the Muses. The Pierian Spring was a fountain in Pieria sacred to the Muses and believed to communicate poetic inspiration. So as I was figuring out exactly what Pierian meant, I came across this piece of art and the explanation of what you're seeing. And I thought it was really interesting. Now, Pierre, you have to tell me if you reject it or if it's good. 
But I thought it, I thought it sounded interesting. So this is a drawing, in case you can't see the, um, what it says on the screen. It's a drawing of three muses holding musical instruments as they sit by a pool fed by a spring which Pegasus, rearing behind them, has created. Did you all know? I didn't know this. You all know, you, we've heard of Pegasus, right? That's a, a very basic Greek um, our, uh, myth mythological creature that most people have heard of. Well, as I was reading about it, it is said that he could make these well springs, like he would go tap his hoof and then a spring would pop out. And when you drank from it, you would get you know, special knowledge. It wasn't always the same kind of knowledge, but I guess that's how you got smart. You had to try to find one of those springs uh, back in those days. So in this picture, Pegasus has created one of those springs, the Pierian spring. In the foreground, there are two swans who are drinking from the pool. And in Greek mythology, an inspiring spring burst forth where an inspiring spring burst forth wherever Pegasus, the winged horse, struck his hoof. One of these, the Pierian spring, believed to be the home and the seat of the worship of Orpheus and was sacred to the muses. So this organization, with that little background, right, this organization is devoted to the promoting, promoting and encouraging the study and enjoyment of the fine arts, because that is, I guess y'all drank from that spring. Is that what you did? Mm -hmm. So the Pierians incorporated in 1983. In 1993, the official documents of the organization were presented to the Maryland Historical Society in Baltimore, Maryland, thereby ensuring a place of importance in the chronology of Maryland history. Since the chartering of the first chapter in Baltimore, Maryland, 17 additional chapters have been established around the United States, making the Pierians Incorporated a national organization. There are currently 16 active chapters. Tonight, we recognize the Atlanta chapter of the Pierians for their steadfast commitment to the arts. On September the 2nd, 2000, Marsha Thompson, already a Pierian, but new to Atlanta, met with Molly Neal, the national president of the Pierians Incorporated, regarding forming a Pierian chapter in Atlanta. Marsha and the other women interested in the arts had their first organizational meeting later that month. Prospective members met monthly and named their interest group Les Artistes. In addition to business meetings, Les Artistes attended cultural events in Atlanta, assisted in fundraising endeavors, and participated in a book drive for South African youth as a service project. After submitting the required documentation, the Atlanta chapter was chartered Saturday, May 19, 2001, in the Art Gallery of Trevor Arnett Hall in Clark Atlanta University's campus. Marsha Thompson served as the, as the chapter's chartering president. The chapter has immersed itself in artistic endeavors and community service projects. The chapter has supported the urban youth harp, let me see, there we go, the urban youth harp ensemble since 2013 to the present, uh, financially and also supporting them by attending their programs. Do we know about this group, y'all? Find out. It's a, it's a wonderful program. I have seen them on uh, Good Morning America, like all those national things. I mean, it, it, it is really a wonderful program. If you have anybody interested, uh, you, who you think might be interested in learning to play the harp, call them. You can just Google Urban Youth Harp. Um, they also support art institutions that were adversely affected by the pandemic. Um, one in particular uh, was the ba Balethnic Dance Company. Do we know about them? Yes, because we've seen the Urban Nutcracker? Yes. They also have supported the Performing Arts Magnet Program at the Tri-Cities High School. Um, they have given scholarships to deserving students to go to um, music camp in the summer, and they attend uh, multiple uh, cultural events throughout Atlanta and the surrounding areas throughout the year. Um, this chapter has also received grants, acknowledgments, and has hosted a national assembly. The national assembly took place in Atlanta on Octo in October 2012. K. Joy Peters, nominated by the Atlanta chapter as a national honorary member, was approved by the national office 
and presented to the national organization at the National Assembly in 2012. The chapter received a matching grant for two consecutive years to help support the Urban Youth Harp Ensemble. Let me, where they go? There it is. Um, in 2014, Darian Klontz, nominated by the national chapter, won the National Project Award. It is noteworthy that the Atlanta chapter of the Pierians Incorporated was incorporated as a nonprofit organization in Georgia in 2017. It was the first of the Pierians Incorporated chapters to, a, to, a, to attain a 501c3 status as a nonprofit organization. The Atlanta chapter of the Pierians continues to support the arts and youth interested in the arts in the Atlanta metropolitan area. And to my left, your right, we have some Pierians with us this evening. So thank you all so much for being here tonight, ladies. I was so excited um, that you, you know, wanted to come, come all the way out here. And yeah, we live here. Okay. Well, not all of you live here, but, but many of you do. So we really appreciate you spending this time with us. So can you tell us what are the Pierians working on right now? What projects do you have going? What initiatives do you have? We are currently working. I don't know if you've heard of the Art Exchange uh, in East Point. It is. It houses various. You have various forms of art. It's a place where artists can gather to show their work. They have various um, displays, uh, and we meet there. And we also volunteer at their various events. We also still support the Urban Youth Hop Ensemble. And I would just like to say uh, about the Urban Youth Hop Ensemble, we submitted a young lady who is a harpist with that group uh, for recognition at the national level. And today I received uh, a check that she came in second place and she won $500. All right. Yeah. So we are continually supporting Urban Youth Hop Ensemble. And I want to thank you did a wonderful presentation on uh, Pierians, and I want to just introduce someone that many of you already know who served as a national officer with the uh, Pierians. Uh, Janet Payne is our immediate past first vice president, yeah. national yeah. vice president mm -hmm. of the Pierians. So I'd like to recognize Janet, and we have some other members here. And I'll tell you, we have three brand new members and I just <laughs> thank them for coming out with us. They were inducted in May so they're fairly new but I want them to introduce themselves. I'm Kathy Shepard Lee from Atlanta. I'm Linda Johnson Anderson from Atlanta. I'm Marilyn Minor from Atlanta. Thank you. Uh, uh, certainly and um, oh, and Do Darlene Kimes <laughs> from Atlanta and our uh, so we also uh, support the Douglas County Arts Council so we we uh, participate and attend many many events sponsored uh, so it's a collaborative effort well, well certainly um, and you know we talk about the continuum of, of art and uh, and Miss West um, did our uh, choreography for our for the first cotillion ball, the former Cotillion Ball offered in Douglas County maybe 20 years ago. I don't know if you remember that or not, but right? <laughs> but, but certainly, but um, when we talk about the uh, Pierian Springs and, and, the, and that mythical, that mythical uh, character, it makes us feel good. Well, didn't our young people dance and make us yes. feel good? Yes. That's the continuum of, of art. And what we've done with the Pierians, now we are in discussion, we want to uh, support uh, New Manchester, uh, the, the arts uh, program there, because they are a magnet. So we are in discussion uh, with them to support them uh, uh, lo locally. But the, uh, the way we want to support the continuum of art, you talked about your young lady that had gone to the Joffrey, Joffrey School of Ballet, well, in dance, dance company. And so we uh, take it to another level of those, uh, those individuals that are seriously considering some phase, facet of the arts as a profession. So we focused on emerging arts artists. 
So these are people that are maybe in college and maybe working on their masters in fine arts because we want to, because as you know, money is hard to come by, especially in the field of arts. So we do have a scholarship that we give uh, for uh, emerging artists. So we would certainly, Mr. West, I say to you, if you know of your, your not alumni, alumni of it, but you, you're not really alumni because you're always a member <laughs> of, your, of, your, of your group, but we certainly want their names because we certainly like to su submit them uh, for uh, national uh, consideration for emerging artists, artists. And these are people that have dedicated themselves to, to, um, to uh, promoting, to, to uh, experiencing the art. And another thing that we did, we're just coming out of uh, a pandemic where our studios shut down, our theaters went dark. Look at what happened on Broadway. Look at what happened with our local mm -hmm. uh, theaters. Uh, but we said that we, at our galleries, you know how we go to galleries, they shut, they shut down. Well, we, um, we uh, had a national initiative to support the arts, to applaud the arts by donating. But the people, the studios, the venues, their needs still continued. They still had to keep the lights on. They still had to pay staff. So we had that national, uh, to not to be selfish, because we have enjoyed the arts for so many years by applauding them, going to plays, going to performances, uh, 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 the, the 80 West Dance uh, Company, so many years, but they had to, the, the need for support continued. So we had a national uh, initiative to applaud the arts by donating. So every chapter in the country uh, donated to some facet of the arts to help them with their expenses when the lights were turned out during pandemic. Thanks heaven, they're open again. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And let me just, uh, we are growing. It's a growing organization. I know you mentioned we had 16, actually there are 22 chapters now, but the last one's being uh, chartered in Hawaii, uh, Seattle, and Tampa, Florida. Okay. So we are, we're growing. <laughs> All right. Well, if someone is thinking, well, you know what, I think I need to join that group, what, what would they do? How do you become a part of it? You contact any one of the Pierians. We are, go to our Facebook page, go to our website, um, and some, you submit an application. We look at your interest in the arts. We take you through an orientation session. And if you're successful, then you are inducted into the Pierians organization. It's just a matter of application. And you can either get it online, you can, Janet, everybody knows Janet. You can call Janet. Yeah. And you can be a recommendation from another member of the Pierians. Well, we have an award for you all for all the work that you've done. So, on behalf of the Douglas County Government and the Board of Commissioners, we would like to present you with this award for outstanding achievement in the promoting of the arts. Thank you for what you do. Thank you so much. I accept this on behalf of our 22 members and our national office. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. All right, joining me are two very talented artists, and we are moving into our artist portion of the evening. So I have Landon Prather here in the green and Daniel Wingo in the gold. And um, they are part of our art exhibit up on the third floor. So part of what we do here at the county is we try to provide opportunities for people to have a fine art experience for free. And one of the ways is we have a gallery on the third floor and we work with artists to make fine art available to view in person to all our citizens for free. We have an art show every six to eight weeks, something new is up and anybody can come uh, during courthouse hours and view the art. Uh, right now, the show that we have up is called Mindscapes in Motion, and it is a show of all abstract art. So, I have my first question for you both is, what does abstract art mean to you? How would you define that? You want to go first, Daniel? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Well, I mean, it's it's not always everyone's cup of tea, but uh, for me, uh, it means appreciating uh, what something is, not necessarily. Uh, it doesn't have to be super deep. It doesn't have to have um, some um, really uh, significant esoteric meaning to anyone. Sometimes uh, it's just about enjoying something for what it is. Mm -hmm. Just the beauty of uh, just creation and making beautiful things. Mm -hmm. The way I view abstract art is the ability to tap into the subconscious mind. So when you look at abstract art, there's certain colors, certain textures, certain movements that actually spark imagination in the viewer. So what I love about abstract artwork, it's really about the viewer. Um, it can tell a story that resonates with that, with that person at their soul. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, I mean, to piggyback more and more, Landon was saying, oddly enough, in a way, uh, sometimes uh, what, uh, you know, something means to you says something in a way more about you than sometimes it does about the art. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we bring out things we didn't know ourselves, you know, by way of the art. Mm -hmm. So when we were discussing this show, when Landon and I, and I were discussing this show, I said, well, what do you think we should call it? Um, and he, he came up with mindscapes in motion. So what does that mean to you? Kind of like um, what Daniel explained, you know, it's abstract art normally isn't everybody's cup of tea because it's, what is this? What are those colors? I don't understand it because it's not clearly defined for me. That's the beautiful thing about art. When you listen to music, everybody feels something different about a piece of music, whether it be a piano key, a drum, an 808 beat. Sometimes it emits emotions of joy, happiness, sometimes sadness, sometimes fear. So with abstract artwork, the mindscape in motion, it allows each one of us to have a different experience, but at the same time, we're having an experience. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love about abstract art. So that's why I wanted to bring to this community something different, something new, by some black artists that are trying to bring hope as you kind of tag into the Afrofuturism mm -hmm. piece of, of the program. Mm -hmm. Also, an exploration of yourself. One thing I love, uh, I've always been uh, a, you know, a bit of an introvert, so I, I love my own company, so I can just sit and work and just be in my own mind, in my own world. and creating things that uh, occur only, you know, between my own ears. And um, uh, I find that one of the most valuable things um, uh, I even do when I, when I create the art. Sometimes I'm not even per se thinking about that. I'm maybe thinking about some, you know, something I wanted to say, something, you know, I'm feeling, but not even really knowing I'm feeling, but I am, in a way, almost channeling that out into the piece, out into the work. So I really love for my pieces to be a really a conduit or a window into you exploring yourself. Well, I have to admit, you know, I, I love art. I have a great appreciation for it. I always try to, um, if I buy art to hang in my, in my house, I try to buy art by an artist. Um, and not a, a mass-produced piece. Not saying anything wrong with mass-produced pieces, but I'm just saying that's one of the ways I try to support the arts. Um, but abstract art is challenging for me. I, when I look at it, I need to know what you're talking about. Life is confusing enough, right? Do I don't want to spend a lot of money on something and be confused when I look at it, so, you know? So, but, <laughs> but, so when Landon came and hung this exhibit up, some of the pieces I feel exactly the way I just said, but some of them are beautiful. They just really are. I can't tell you why, but to, to me, they're beautiful. Um, what you see in the background here of this slide is one of his paintings. Daniel's paintings. Yes, one of Daniel's paintings. 
and I think it's upstairs. Yeah, it sure is. So you can sure see is. the whole, mm -hmm. that's just like a piece of it. You can yeah. see the whole thing when you go upstairs. Mm -hmm. And I love that. Mm -hmm. I, I, and I can tell you why I like this one. Um, these, because there's another one similar, I think, hanging up there, yeah. similar to that. there's two more similar to that. It, to me, it looks like Paisley. But see, I understand Paisley, so when mm -hmm. I'm looking at it, I can make sense of it. Let me give you a bit more to chew on. Uh, there's one up there, this big black and white one um, with um, really more um, multicolored piece layered on top. So that comes from my truth series, my nature of truth series. And the whole point was it's showing the true nature of truth. Truth is unpredictable. Truth is its own thing. You either take it how it is or you don't. You can't really mm, put your finger on truth in a way sometimes. Uh, and the true nature of truth there is being lifted above the broken paradigm of black and white surface level thinking. So there is literally the manifestation of the fullness of truth, if you can capture that, being lifted above the broken paradigm, hence the why it is all cracked and, break and broken, being lifted above a almost field of, a, <laughs> in a way, uh, something that is functional but barely. <laughs> our sometimes service level understanding. Mm -hmm. And I sure didn't get that when I looked at it, but <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. all, when you go up there and look at it, you know, see if you can find that yeah. in there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, and I guess really one of the greatest things about abstract art in particular is it can be whatever you see it as, right? It can be. It can be what you need to see it as. It can be a source of inspiration for you or, or whatever. Um, now, I, both of you, this is a question for both of you. Correct me if I'm wrong, but is abstract art, that creating art in that way, something that was birthed in America? No, it was not. It was not birthed in America, but as many things, not only in America, but let's talk specifically about African Americans or black people, we take it to a different level. So what you will see when you go upstairs, and I hope that you ask each of us about what does this mean? Why do I feel a certain thing? I'll give you a piece in particular and then I'll finish your question. There's a piece called Red Thread above the couch. To the first glance, it just looks like it's some red and some, some uh, beige, um, kind of going up there, and that's actually red thread. On so, the right. On the right. But when you experience it, when you go up there and see it, it's actually about a story of the red thread in Japan. In Japanese culture, the red thread is about two soulmates and how they always find each other and how they will continuously find each other from this life and the next. So abstract artwork, as you can kind of hear how Daniel speaks, it's a different language. And so when a person sees abstract artwork, there's abstract artwork all around here. If you look at this, this building, this floor, it emits an emotion to a person. It's a language that other people can see, feel, and understand as easily as his yellow and my green. When we're driving, we see a green light, we know that means go. When we drive and we see a red light, we know that means stop. That is universal. So pulling back the curtain of abstract art, it's purely cerebral. So everybody can speak that language, no matter where you come from. So going back to your original question of, did it start in America? No, but our goal especially is to make it go even bigger because of that fact that art is for all. Okay, now can you tell us, these, the two um, pieces up here are Landon's. Yes. What is the purple one called? So the one on the left is called Gateway. Okay. And when you see that, it's actually 48 by 48 inches. If you stare in the middle where that white is, it does something called the Fabricini sequence. So art, my artist right here, you understand what that is. It's actually a cerebral piece. The way that our eyes work is that 
we try to course correct with our eyes, just like your glasses, it course corrects. Our brain does that as well. So when you look in the middle of that piece and stare for it at like five seconds, something happens to you. That is abstract art. So I made this piece doing research to understand the human mind. And that's what abstract art is. It's actually a science. It's not as simple as Googling a piece of a, a picture on the internet and then I'm gonna draw the person. It is let me pull back myself, reach into spirit, and then pull out what comes out from there. And once you go up there and you just sit and settle in these pieces, you're first attracted by how it looks, just like your love. I'm attracted by how we look, but I feel something different. Why? That's where the conversation with yourself happens. Okay, let's stay on this one, because there's also something else very unique about that piece. Would you tell us what that is? Oh, well, there's actually two different parts to it. There's actually an augmented reality element to it as well. So as we talk about Afrofuturism, as we talk about did things start here in America, one thing that Daniel does and that I do is we add different elements of technology and art to some of our pieces. So um, I can talk to you guys about it when we, when we get upstairs, if anybody's interested of how you can actually have that augmented reality experience happen to really experience what that piece is. You're gonna like it. I've seen it. So find out, just listen to him. It's really neat. Um, and I think he's got a couple of augmented realities up there. Do you? I do. I do. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. Okay, so hold on. Now look, okay. So you have these three-dimensional pieces up there. I think you have two three-dimensional ones. When Landon brought him in, I was thinking, how in the world is he? First of all, how are you going to hang it? Um, but he did it. I mean, I still, I still don't know how. I don't know what, how it's hooked, how, what do you do to the back to be able to do it. But can you tell us, first of all, what is the material that you're using or materials? That is uh, archival grade, 246-pound uh, paper. Believe it or not, mm -hmm. I thought it was um, canvas because it looks real. It looks thick. Yes, well, it's very yeah. thick. I mm -hmm. thought it was actually fabric of some sort. So I mean, I'm thinking about experimenting with that, but in a weird way, actually, um, uh, sometimes uh, the paper c can mimic fabric. But yeah, little idea I'm toying with. But yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so stay tuned. We yeah. might see. We might see that soon. Mm -hmm. So how are you? How are you doing this? How do you, do you paint the paper first and then you fold it up? Or, you know, is that a trade secret you can't tell us? How, how are we no, getting these no, textures no magic and these here. patterns and these folds and why are we doing it? Ah. <laughs> why? Because I can. But uh, <laughs> no, uh, believe it or not, uh, no, so it's, um, I fold the paper, uh, assemble the um, uh, how I want it to look. Uh, then I um, kind of, uh, now I, I plan, I uh, sit out, I photograph it, plan a color palette, uh, then I go to work. And one of the reasons why I use paper is that uh, it came from a, uh, something I discovered uh, some, uh, some time ago, is that uh, when you pour uh, paper, when you pour paint down, uh, or, or any liquid, it, it will inevitably shift towards a certain direction, be it over time or it, it will start to shift. Well, I thought about what if I just started doing it intentionally? And it really kind of birthed a whole new, uh, you know, way I started creating. So one of the reasons why I use paper is because when you fold it, it'll create these hills and valleys that, uh, really almost makes it unpredictable. Uh, so you almost don't know what you're going to get when you start pouring. Okay, so you don't even know how it's gonna turn out, is what you say. I have an idea. Okay. <laughs> well, you, know, you, you have an idea, but I mean, really, um, you know, to me, that's really the, the whole fun behind it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not, it's, in a way, it 
is a kind of almost creative exploring mm -hmm. because uh, you have an idea how it's going to turn out, but like life, sometimes you never really know what you're going to get. <laughs> and you may wind up with, mm, you know, but also you may wind up with gold, mm -hmm. which in most cases I have. So I've mastered, I'm, I'm slowly mastering the technique. So we should start calling you Midas, is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want to. <laughs> All right, so I got out of order on my slides, but that's mm -hmm. okay. Hold on, no, we're not done. We've got one more real important slide. So Landon is not only an artist, he is a gallery owner. Who knew that Douglas County has its own gallery, fine art gallery? Did y'all know that? Did you know you don't have to go all the way to Atlanta to see good art? It's, in, it's right here in Douglas County. This man right here owns it called the Land Landon Prather Gallery and it is in Villa Rica. That's a little picture there. Very nice. Um, you go by appointment, is that right? Yes, appointment Monday through Friday and Saturday 11 to 5. Okay, so now let, let's just talk real briefly about that. So why did you want to open a gallery? Why was that important to you? Yeah, so my wife, Dr. Marissa Prather, right here, and I said, you know what? Um, we want to make something that's for everybody. Um, we want to provide art, like you just said. Everybody doesn't have access to Atlanta, but I'm an artist myself, and she's a backer of dreams. So um, we wanted to make something for us, by us. And we want to bring other people along as well. And by bringing other people along, like Daniel and other artists that you'll see their work, but also 33 artists internationally, it's not just Atlanta, it's not just the Southeast. We have artists from Serbia, Italy, and more coming, Nigeria as well, um, South Carolina, New York. Um, it was about bringing these artisans here and also doing the opposite of bringing us everywhere else. Mm -hmm. So has anyone ever been into a, a fine art gallery? Is that how you spend your Saturdays? No? Well, I really encourage you to go visit. Uh, that's the first step because the arts are for all of us. I know the arts have a stigma that they're only for a certain kind of person. It's not, no, it's for all of us. And you've seen tonight how we have contributed in all of the arts. So this is for all of us and we hope that this piques your interest and in, in inspires you to do something new if you've never done that before. Um, so one of the things that I really like about um, Landon's gallery is, as he was saying, he, rep he works with artists from all over the world um, who are showing their perspective, their culture, the way they grew up. You can see um, different influences. Um, but there are also many um, artists that you will really resonate with. You will have a shared experience with, too. When you walk in, you'll, you will see something and know exactly what that artist was trying to convey to you. So uh, it won't be a foreign experience to you, I promise. You'll see something that'll say, wait a minute, this, this is speaking to me. I understand what's happening. And also, uh, he likes to educate people. So one of the things I want to talk about just briefly we probably all want to know this. Why is art so expensive? Well, I'm going to easily give that answer. Do we have a problem buying Louis Vuitton? Well, some of us do. But, I mean, but do we have a problem seeing the value in, ooh, that bag is $5,000. When you go into that store, you don't ask for a bargain. You don't say, you know what, can I, that's just too much. You either can get it or you can't, but that's also mass produced. Mm -hmm. Here's the beautiful thing about real art, not in a crate and barrel, not at a TJ Maxx or a Walmart. It's made by real people. And real people go through a real life experience that can't be duplicated. So not only do you have real life experience, but you sometimes have 100, 200 hours of actual hand, eye to canvas or paper 
or sculpting work. Imagine doing your job, your hourly wage, for 100 hours and not getting paid for it. And then let's pull back a little bit. Imagine if someone said at the end of that 100 hours, I'm not going to pay you and it's not worth what you know that you're worth. We as people, but us as artists as well, are starting to figure out what our worth is. And we are also starting to realize that it's okay to ask for that. But at the same time, the education helps someone say, you know what? One day I'm gonna buy that Range Rover. One day I'm gonna buy that Landon Prather. One day I'm gonna buy that Daniel Wingo. And it's gonna exceed in value. And the other piece of this that's extremely important, we're alive. We're alive right now. We all know about Michelangelo. We all know about Basquiat. They did not get to see the fruits of their labor. With Basquiat, Coach is knocking it out right now. His family is not getting that. So that education piece happens with you actually get to shake my hand. You get to meet Daniel and hear his genius while we're here, while we're young. And the thing that's a benefit for you, you get to invest in that and watch your value go up as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is worth a hand clap. Mm -hmm. So um, every time we hang a show, there's at least five pieces I want to buy. But I don't have Landon Prather money. I don't. Um, so one of the things that Landon has done, and some other galleries have kind of caught on now, they will let you pay they'll let you split it up, right? Yeah, so yeah. what we have is we work with Synchrony Bank. Mm -hmm. We actually have a Landon Prather Fine Art Gallery credit card. The only in the Wait, whole, absolutely. I didn't even know that. We're the only art gallery, not just black art gallery. We've made history with Synchrony Bank. And what we've also done for our collectors is legitimately no interest. I and my wife, we take the brunt of that. Because when we say artists for all, mm. we mean it. Mm. We mean it. I'm still at, you got a credit card. <laughs> I mean, I, all that other stuff you said is important too. But I, I wow. Okay, so then we, we have to apply for the credit card. Y'all got to do a credit check on us. We have to do all of that. So it's not us. It's legitimately Synchrony Bank. Okay. Just as if you're trying to get some furniture, mm -hmm. they work with furniture companies, everybody, automobiles. You, you, know, you know it, most of us have something like that and they work with us as well. But we do something special with them that makes it where it's no interest and not even a, not some bait and switch type of thing. So um, I know you have five digit paintings hanging. I think there's some hanging up there now. Maybe six digit at, the, at your gallery, I don't know. Um, but he also has three digits that's usually my price range. I bought a couple of three-digit paintings or, or uh, pieces. So that is another, you know, kind of way you can dip your toe into it. You know, so if you go into the gallery and see a smaller piece, you can still walk out with an original work of art that is authenticated. Um, and uh, you can have confidence in it. He gives you the paperwork and everything. Uh, so you can have it insured and all of that good stuff. Um, and, and you just start slow. You just start slow. And the more you learn about art and what you like and what uh, speaks to you and what you want to support, you, you kind of slowly get there. You'll get there. And as he was saying, if you were saving up to get that bag, um, you know, you save up to get that painting too. Same, same, but which one will appreciate more, right? Yeah, art, art goes up. Mm -hmm. It does not go down. Which one might be taught at universities? That's another thing. I'm sure Basquiat had no idea what was going to happen to his pieces and, and his, his legacy. Um, but, you know, we might be buying a painting now from a living artist that is going to be the exemplar for 
um, future art students. We just don't know. So um, support the arts. Okay, fellas, do you have anything else you want to say before we wrap this up? <laughs> Thank you for having us. Tell us Thank one you very much. Time where your gallery is. Yes, so the Land and Prather visit. Fine Art Gallery, it's in Villarica. The easiest thing to do, there's two pieces, landonprather.com or on Instagram, landonpratherart. And if we visit, what are the hours? So Monday through Friday, it's by appointment. So go to landonprather.com. You'll see, you know, find my appointment. You can add an appointment or on Saturday, 11 to 5 o'clock. All right. So now we know. So, the last piece, on behalf of the Douglas County Government and the Board of Commissioners, I would like to present you with this award for your prestigious achievement in visual arts. Thank you for Thank what you, you do. We have had such a wonderful program this evening. I hope you've enjoyed meeting the fantastic artists we have living right here under our noses. Did you know that? Did you know we had so much rich um, talent right here? So I hope you learned something new. I hope it has deepened your appreciation for the arts. Um, and I would like to challenge you to do something to support the arts this month, whether you go to a program, uh, attend a program, give a donation, do something to support the arts this Black History Month. Thank you again for being here this evening. Um, we enjoyed having you and we hope you have a good night. Mm -hmm.